Let me tell you what. The worst thing ever, the absolute worst thing ever, I think what I tend to do, I try to do, is tell them upon hiring, like, <laughs> I will fire you. But then he don't, Amanda. I do. <laughs> no, that's I not have. true. Self help from the hip. Small dose. We're talking that shit. Small dose. Keeping it real. Small dose. With me and Nancy. It's so funky. So funky. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're all here in pink. Can I tell them about? You can tell them. Please, this is the only way to start. Please the tell them why we are here. <laughs> so the plan was, we was gonna record this next week. But then what had happened was they was in pink, and they said today is the day. Today is the day. The young sages are on time. We came so early. Yes. We came a full calendar week early. Yeah, yeah. At the required time. Yes. I mean, we just put it in our calendar wrong. Showed us. Your team invited us correctly. <laughs> we were so worried about being wrong. We were like, we'll put it a week ahead. We'll arrange for our children to be picked up. So we're here. We're here. Um, we did it. I'm proud of us. Yeah. Fist bump. Yes, and yes. we're in the flow. <sighs> we're in the flow. Team. Yes. Team. We got it together. We got it together. Everybody we got it together. Um, so, you know, you. <laughs> I was about to segue. You know what it is to get it together. Uh, <laughs> That's a professional. <laughs> because the family business. Let me also just make a note real quick. The reason you all were able to get in Amanda We Trust is because when my original editor bailed, I called Kev on stage. Did he end up helping? He edited it. He did. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. This is my greatest joy. <laughs> I love being able to. I know. That's why when Amanda called, I was like, I'm only going to hear with a person that I know wouldn't do me wrong. <laughs> I'm not going. I'd rather tell you I don't know somebody <laughs> than give you somebody who's going to make me look bad. Right. 100%. And when I hit him, he hit him. He, he, he hit me. And he was like. He went above and beyond because it ended up going longer than we expected. And then like my ex was doing the music and then we broke up in the middle of him doing the music. Oh. And then he decided not to do, not to finish the oh. art, which is crazy. But <laughs> so he like dropped the drive off to Mark. Wow. And then Mark was like, this drive looks like a shit show. So then I had to like, then drop Mark drove the drive to me. Really? So that I could make the corrections because he was like, I understand. Yeah, yeah. I understand. He just gave me a drive of something he edited, and I was like, this is it's well so organized. 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 I mean, everything <sighs> is in here. Yeah, it's no, it's very, very um, wow. it's very serendipitous that, and the irony about all of this is that it was my ex who told me to call you. So, <laughs> <laughs> it all works out. <laughs> it all, it works, all out works out. <laughs> yes. So, thank you for that. Of and, uh, you know, but the reason that was able to happen is because you all have a network of mm -hmm. folks and you all have built this and, you know, from the ground up, we had you on the podcast originally talking about just like, what was it? Building your brand? Yep. Yes. Yeah, so it was yep. side effects of building your brand. Yep. So I'm glad to have you all to have you back in partnership. Yes, Yay. absolutely. Um, <laughs> Melissa. Yes. <laughs> so you are on the internet. You are Mrs. Kev on stage. I am. Can you tell me about when or how the decision was made to be like, you know what, we're going to family it up? You know, the interesting thing is that Kevin chose this name. Okay. okay. Yeah, that wasn't a me thing. But the other thing <laughs> is uh, that if I could speak, though, for you, and maybe you can chime in. Sure. Is on that, what you say. Okay. <laughs> is that at the beginning of social media, you're not building a brand. Mm. So it's less, there's a lot ah. more, you know, retroactive thought and intention you can put in something. Yeah. The reality is 10 plus years ago, uh, you're my wife, Miss <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> the funny thing is I created Facebook accounts for Melissa, her sisters, my, sister my brother, Mom. all of my friends, because nobody was on it, but me. Right. And I was like, I don't have anybody to talk to. Okay. So I made Facebook accounts for like the, the my ten closest friends, and and Instagram too, because I was like, I'm about. You made their account. I yeah. made all their accounts 
<laughs> the original old school Facebook, no Kevin on stage, just Kevin Fred. The Facebook. Yes, the, the Facebook. Facebook. <laughs> I made all their accounts just so I could have somebody's statuses to look at. Hilarious. And then again, when it was time to make her Instagram, I couldn't find, I tried Lisa Fred, Liz Fred, and I was like, oh, I just miss Kevin on stage. I just I don't have time for this. <laughs> And now it looks like I was smarter than I really was. <laughs> she was like, on my eighth username, and I was like, we're married. Her last name is my name. This we'll work. just do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, I actually thought she would change it eventually, but she never did. What made you not change it? Um, I think because it became two things. It, be, it did become a brand. You know, mm-hmm. now I recognize it as a brand. Um, and then number two, I, I find pride that I'm married to a man that has allowed me to wear his name and there's no disgrace. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody can you say that. I'm just grateful <laughs> that God <laughs> has, allowed, has allowed that to be so for me. Untainted. Yes. Not besmirched. <laughs> Correct. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm grateful for that. Pure. Yeah. Even. <laughs> yes. I hear that, sis. I hear that. Oh. We're going to clap for that. We're going to clap for that. Uh, because I am Ms. Amanda Seals. <laughs> <laughs> but you wear proud. That's your name. Yes. That's all. Um, so when did it become like we're not just Kevin doing stand up and we're supporting, but we're going to make this not just a brand, but a business? Because I feel like the whole as a person who's like in the process of me being my brand, like, cause I've had like smart, funny and black. And then I have, I had a whole other name, Amanda Diva. And then like, I have this podcast, small doses. It's, it's actually been a, a mind shift to consider myself the brand. Really? Yeah. I've always thought of you as the brand. Me too. Well, that's I why I decided to finally do it. Cause yeah. that's what people would say. It was just like, this is Amanda's podcast. This is Amanda the, the DJ. This is Amanda think, the actress I, or the I comedian. Think, I think you first and then the venture. The so venture I never it. thought that way. And that's why I wasn't doing the right, making the right moves. Oh, I see. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And so in finally catching up to that thinking where like I'm the North Star and these are the things I create. Yeah. It's allowed me to make better business decisions and be like more thoughtful about how to protect the brand versus yeah. the offshoot. The yep. I get it. Got it. I actually get that. I think, um, and maybe even with the age of social media, you are able to step into record. I mean, low key, I probably had to do a little bit of this myself. I'm not even going to lie to you where you recognize, Oh, my voice is my brand, mm-hmm. your perspective, your comedy, your, um, your opinion, your appearance. Your, I was just about to say, even down <laughs> to your hair. Yep. Like all, that becomes uniquely who when I think of Amanda, when I think of Melissa or Miss Kev on stage, there are certain images that come to certain things that come to mind. And once long you denim skirt, <laughs> that's fashion. Don't do that. That's fashion. Fashion. Uh-huh, I got that. As Zora. <laughs> Zora. Zora. Uh, Zara Neil Hurston. Yes, yeah, come on, Zora. Yes. Oh, I like that. Um, all of that becomes your brand and then you're right. You protect it and think about it differently. And then all of these are just, like you said, an offshoot of something that naturally is you. Yes. I agree. Yeah. Did you always envision that your family would be tied into your brand or because I know that you, really, I, I love drug shows. Big Carry man. on. I because can't wait to see how this lands. Yeah, drug yeah. Shows, they always. So when we talk about drug shows, we're talking about The Wire. We're talking Wire, about Top Boy. Soprano, Top Boy, I just finished. Ozark, Snowfall. All. Is Breaking Bad? Breaking Bad ish. I didn't watch it, so. Yeah, it's definitely a drug show, but. It's not it, the same. It doesn't fit the thesis that yeah, you're. Okay. Because he didn't. His family was out. Yeah, oh, okay. Were, okay. Even like mob stuff, Goodfellas, all that stuff. And what I like is it's like, it's a family business. Like you're born into the family, the drug dealer employs his family. He takes care of his family. Mm. Eventually, they become a part of the business. So, I love to employ my family now. Love them all. Not everybody can do the work required because it is a job. So sometimes in my life, I've have you ha- have, have, you? I have What's it like firing a family member? Let me tell you what the worst thing ever, the absolute worst thing ever. I think. What I tend to do, I try to do, is tell them upon hiring, 
Like, I will fire you. But then he don't, Amanda. <laughs> I do. No, that's not true. <laughs> Amanda, that's not. I, I didn't fire him? No, no, no. This is what he do. <laughs> no, no, we no. have a rule in the family, in our business. Whoever hires, fires. That's, that's a strong rule. Yes. That's rule. Okay. So the person, okay. Melissa hires a person and they work primarily for her. If it's time to go, you will fire them. Yeah. If I hire you, work primarily for me or with me. If it's time for you to go, I will fire you. So family member, she's actually fired one of my family members. <laughs> How'd that go? Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and that's where the rule came from. <laughs> Okay. That's where the rule came from. Mm -hmm. I said, "Oh no, I can't, I can't get, I can't get in the dynamics of this again." Okay. So, so moving forward, <laughs> that'll be your job. Yeah. So I think what I do love about it is like, like our sister, her sister in law, our, our my sister in law, her sister was working for Netflix, making great money. Okay. Making more money than either of us ever made at a at a job job. Right. Uh, she got laid off as Netflix was laying off people one and all. Right. She got two small kids. They actually told her they were going to lay her off while she was on maternity leave. Right? Wow. Netflix wow. Netflix going to give you a year, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're hearing about layoffs and less. We're like, there's no way they let you go while you're on maternity leave. There is a way. <laughs> <laughs> now, technically, they laid her off at the end of her maternity leave because right. I guess it would look bad or whatever. No, legally, they could not. Oh, okay. Job right, because she would sue. Yeah. yeah. But they told her like six months, three to six months ahead of time, like when you come back, you don't come back. When you yeah. drop when you drop that baby, <laughs> you go and drop off your fob. Just drop off, drop it your fob <laughs> yeah, in yeah. Keep the hoodie. <laughs> keep the hoodie. You know, you know what? We'll even give you the subscription. Keep yeah. the subscription. For six months. Uh, we're going to take away the ability to watch stuff early. Yes, yes. Because that was something that was good. Right? So. Um, Wait, I, I'm sorry. What? Yeah. So they, because of her job, she has uh, the ability to watch stuff early. But when she got let go. You can no That's more. a perk I've never heard yeah, of. Yeah, because she was actually part of Ops. So she actually made sure titles went up. So she needed to make sure oh, it's on Netflix. Okay. Stuff is right. All so right. she can check all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So not everything, but her titles would show up. That's early. cool. No, have everything. Oh, yeah, you show us right. Oh. Everything. We was watching stuff. Everything. And that would hurt us more than anything. <laughs> we punched that password <laughs> in and said, she gone. I'm <laughs> <laughs> She's going with everybody else now, huh? You're regular. Yeah. yeah so okay. she's trying to find a job, trying to find a job. They're stressing. They got kids. How are we going to make the, you know, the rent, the, all that type of stuff. An amazing person, great, talented. And she low key didn't want to go back to corporate America because it was very stressful. Yeah. Netflix was very high paying, but it was infinitely high stress. stress. Yeah. Like it was a very much, we will, they also like, we'll fire you as well. So <laughs> be able to hire her and her husband. They oh, wow. both work for us. Uh, her husband's my tour manager. Amazing. At that job. Great. Mel is an amazing person. She's great at development. She runs merch for us. Like, so to be able to hire people and employ them so yeah. they can live. And now because of that, Mel's able to like uh do her own podcast. She's she's been popping on TikTok. TikTok. She's able to make money. Like as a creative, she's able to tap into things that she wouldn't have been yeah. able to if she had to read scripts and give notes and do all of that. Of course. And you know, do 50, 60 hours of work. So, but it's a it's for every good person you do have people that aren't good and it doesn't work out and then you go wrong fit. wrong fit but you're gonna see them at thanksgiving yeah and the fact like my grandma's calling and shut but, up but my grandma's calling <laughs> how you gonna like, let james you, like, go now, how, now, when we sent them down there with y'all <laughs> we thought it was gonna be okay now what's this i didn't heard <laughs> that you done let them go Oh, Grandma, did you hear the whole story? Well, I didn't hear it. Now we got... It's too much. It's too much. It's too much. So, um... Did they tell the true story? Everybody tells the truth that they, they see, Their truth. Right? And then you also have to tell your truth so that people can figure out what the truth is. Yes, yeah, right? the truth. You know what I'm saying? So that was tough. But, I, you know, it's just like I say, like, I want to work with black people all the time. Sometimes people that I hire that are black don't do a good job. He it doesn't said, make me swear off black people. But no. it does sting a little more. Uh, <laughs> when you're trying to do right, it's just be like, Ugh. What is that? Like, because I just, because I, I, I feel that so deeply in yes. my bones that it's like, <laughs> just, I was rooting for you, you know? And you're just like, why can't you not? Ugh. It's very tough. But and here's the people. thing, and this is the thing. It's not to say that like, um, 
because I feel like sometimes people are like, well, why does it matter what color they are? And it's like, well, because we live in a country where there is considerable oppression and discrimination. Absolutely. And so if we don't take care of us, no one takes care yes. of us. That's why. Okay. And we so, must go out of our way. We, but we, we, because <laughs> we, for example, we looking for an assistant. We ask somebody on our team to send us resumes. What do you think we're getting? I know what we're you're getting. getting. Resumes of people that were like, so me and we're just talking on the way over to your uh, studio a week early. We're like, can we tell them to send black people? Is that illegal? Because they're sending who they think is good, but their network is not going to be black people. Right. So you cannot. That's what I figured. <laughs> so you cannot. <laughs> um, Just keep sending us more people. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there is something to be said for cultural competency. Yes. Um, I was doing the Smart, Funny, and Black tour in 2019, and I had a manager at the time who uh, is a very black man. And I don't just mean like his melanin. I just mean like yeah, his yeah, yeah. his history, like his his job history, like right. his existence culturally, et cetera. Um, and he staffed my whole tour as what with white folks for the smart, funny, and black tour. The whole uh, st- tour manager, bus driver, security, yeah. stage manager, merch. And when the merch girl showed up in coochie cutters <laughs> and a cowboy hat. And um, cowboy boots, I was like, here's the thing. (laughs) You might be great at this job, but there's a cultural competency that has to exist here and the optics of it also are not aligning. And I know some people might listen to that and say like, well, what if white people did that? Well, white people are the enslavers they did, and they, and did, they that. did they're and doing they, and they do and they, that what do you mean did? they're doing it so <laughs> there's that like there's just like the reality that's a false equivalency that people love to face and so i ended up y- y'all just a side note the i called the, the manager and was like what is this right, right. what is go- why is this and he was like well i mean they were all the best for the job yeah the thing is you have to go out of your way there are black people that exist that are best for the job you just have to go out of your way to find them Mm -hmm. and a lot of times we don't want to put in that extra work to find them well by nature of the tour being the smart funny and black tour they weren't the best for the job (laughs) (laughs) like by definition but you're right about the you're right about the you know what it is you have to tap into networks like i mean ultimately like i got the editor for any man we trust because i tapped into my network right and i think a lot of us are still working our way out of like the the bubble that we yes. like kind of like unwillingly got trained to be in yeah. for sure. and for we sure. are being forced not just in this business, but I think we're starting to see a lot more black folks, particularly in business, start to realize like, Oh, this is how like black wall streets got made. Yeah. We have to depend on us. Like we yeah. can't keep trying to right. reach and reach and reach. Like we're right here. It's our, cir- it's yeah. our circle. I remember when I first started, and I was, we were a lot of people were getting hired, and the head of production at the company I worked at, he only hired white people. And at first, I thought it was racist, like racism. And then I realized a bigger problem in Hollywood That's is his nepotism. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nepotism and network. Like mm-hmm. he's not thinking, I'm not gonna find black people. Right. He doesn't know them. Nope. He went to school with who he went to school with. He's finding the best people yes. for the job. And when he, when you hit me, I'm gonna hit a black editor because that's who I work with. Right. Yes. If I hit him. He's going to, oh, let me get Kev the best editor. Yes. It's likely not going to be black, but he's not moving race-based. That's who he went to school with. And there wasn't a lot of black people at that school. And one time he hit me with a black person because she went to school with him. And he's like, oh, she's great. But he's not even thinking like that. And I think a lot of times we think people are moving race-based. But if it's, I mean, and of course they they are. are. I was like, Of course they are. But a lot of times they're just like, I'm going to put my people on. And their people just ain't black. So when I put my people on, they're likely going to be black. And going out of your way to do that. I want to circle back. I want to circle back really quick. The other thing that we have to um, be cautious of and that I've learned through hiring mistakes is you have to be very intentional about vetting who you're hiring. Mm -hmm. So you're not putting the wrong people in the wrong position. Listen, I follow a lot of dog shelters, okay? okay? <laughs> and they talk all the time. These are not just shelters, but like dog like people that work in rescue. And they talk all the time about how it's like even with the best of intentions, yep. if you don't pay attention to what this pro- dog's personality is, you will put it with the wrong owner mm-hmm. and it will end up right back here. Yeah. If you don't pay attention to this dog's personality and this other dog's personality, like they're both great 
dogs, but you're setting them up for failure yes. because it does because you didn't pay enough attention. And I bring that up as an example because like we're all animals. Yeah. Like yeah. and on a basic level, I completely agree with you. Like if you don't vet Oh, and vet dogs, get it? Uh, it oh, oh. Yeah. I didn't even get it till you called it out. That was great. But it's like, how have you learned to vet? What are the processes and criteria yeah, that you use? I question. first learned, do not hire in a state of desperation. Sis, Man. you I gotta hire go. the wrong person. Man. I spent 15 years <laughs> hiring in a state of desperation. And every time. Every time. It's the wrong person. And then you're stuck. And, and then, then you're, you're stuck. stuck. And unraveling is way harder and more time conducive and expensive than See, taking the time to find the right person. But sometimes you don't have no, and the that's time. The thing. Sometimes you so don't we were just talking time. about this because we're about to hire somebody, and we're like, but it's about to be the, like, the down season. It's about to be Thanksgiving. I better going to have enough work. And I'm thinking, telling Melissa, like, we that's actually, actually a good to, time. the best time. Let's ramp you up instead of throwing you in when we got Fire. shoots and podcasts. And, Lesson I learned. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let, let's do this while we're going. Of course, they're going it, to. it's a cyclical business, so you're going to get some weeks or months where it's like, oh, there's less work. But you're going to make up for it when there's more work. But at least now we can maybe ease you in yeah. when it's not going crazy. But that's a, that's a tough lesson to learn. It's always more expensive when you have to let people go. You got to find somebody else. You got to do this all over because again. Because then you end up moving that wrong person to a different position because you don't want to hire them or creating stuff for them to do or mm -hmm. trying to create a position that more fits what they're doing. And then you try to backfill the position you actually hired them Man. for. And then your whole team is now payroll heavy because you're paying three people to do the one this job that you needed. Life. Girl, we know. This Yes. <laughs> Listen, it was it was Mr. On Stage who really affirmed for me twice in my life that the thing I thought I wanted is not what I wanted. I was like, yeah, I want my own app. And he was like, no, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> I want what you have here. I was just telling her on camera, I was like, why am I leaving my home? <laughs> Why am I leaving my personal home? I was like, I want a production company. Kevin was like, no, you don't. You don't. Just when you have an idea, staff up. <laughs> when you're done, staff down. Done. That was revelatory for me. It literally like set me free. The gorilla like jumped off my back and was really? like, see ya. <laughs> and ran off into the jungles. Yeah, because you because this town also, and this is just like outside of family business, but this town really makes you feel like these are the goals that you're supposed to want. Yes. And if you don't want these goals, then you're not focused. Yes. 100%. Yeah. You know, like I thought I wanted to be like a mogul. Like I'm looking at Issa, I'm looking at Lena. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, like that's what I'm supposed to want, right? But yeah. like my body would not move me towards it. Right. And I was like, I got to tap with the ground this. I got to get obedient in the mirror yeah. and really ask, like, what is it that you really are feeling? And I was yeah. like, I don't feel none of that. <laughs> and that is free. And that is free. Especially Tab, she's a great example of that. She could have been a vegan influencer forever. Yeah. But she was like, from jump, knew I'm not here to be that. Mm -hmm. So you won't box me in to do that. Yep. And I want other opportunities. But the only thing more important than knowing what you want is knowing what you don't want. <laughs> so in creating your family business format, mm -hmm. tell me about what you didn't want. Because I think a lot of us have seen, look at the, the there's the weigh-ins, there's yeah. the wine-ins. Like we've seen family businesses, black businesses, why are you laughing? Yeah. <laughs> the weigh-ins, the wine-ins, right. Jokes, so, Jesus. <laughs> and it's like, where did you all, or did you even look at any blueprints? I'm going to, I'm going to reverse engineer this. Okay. <clears throat> and it, I hope it makes sense. In my mind, what I want more than anything is 25 years from now on Thanksgiving, I want my kids to be able to come to our house uh -huh. for Thanksgiving with their wives, girlfriends, baby moms, estranged, Hello. Whatever, Hello. whatever. Whoever they love. <laughs> Boyfriends. Whatever they love. Non-binary. Whoever you like. It's the baby mama, though. Bring them to the house. <laughs> you don't know. Hey, people make choices. Listen, people paths paths are not as straight and yeah. linear. That as they so, used to, that's kind of like the easing in. Yeah. <laughs> Whoever you with at the moment, y'all want some greens? Come on. Come on in. You're all okay. Welcome. So why it's important for me to know that that's what I want then, it helps me inform what I want to do now. Feels good, Kevin. Because okay, what Kevin. will happen is I'm very competitive, right? So I'll see mm -hmm. like, oh, Country Wayne's on tour or Matt Rife's doing 
uh, 160. I need to do that. Why or Kevin. I, why do I hear this white boy's name hey, every he, day? He's everywhere. He's everywhere. I was in Belize. <laughs> really? On a key, uh, an hour from the mainland. Doing backflips? Yes. Your backflips are amazing. Oh, I saw you. Thanks, I was like, guys. This is a, obviously, you know how to do that before. <laughs> But it's a great backflip. Thank and you. And I wanted to learn. I am 42. <laughs> Just want to remind so y'all. So I'm like, and I used to move like that. Right? I used to Whereas be, you would see example, it and, okay. I'm off tour. Me and Melissa go see Kevin Hart and Dave Chappelle at Madison Square Garden. And she got tickets that are like the right first there. And now I'm on tour because I have to get to Madison Square Garden. Mm -hmm. And I need to start. I literally text I my agent. I need to start now. Right now. That's not the plan. I ended up just getting off tour. Did Sunday. he tell you he was doing this? It, it, it was like an immediate thing. It, I mean, like he Kevin, turned to you and was like, I'm yeah, going on tour. But then the action behind it, Kev doesn't, there's not a lot of time between like, I want to do this and now I'm doing it. I'm the exact <laughs> same way. Oh. Decide, yeah, I'm like the exact well, same way. I was way. hoping to find empathy from you. <laughs> I respect <laughs> you. Nothing. I respect. <laughs> you know what it is? It's decisiveness. You know what I call it? <laughs> Impulsive. Impulsive. Very impulsive. Slow down. Impulsive. Well, I will say this. My recent work has been in practice the pause. Mm. Practice yeah. the pause. Practice yeah. the pause. Like have the have, have the the, yeah. the thing and then let it get yeah. in your cells. Yeah. And not not for two weeks, you know, whatever, yeah, yeah, but like yeah, yeah, yeah. let it metabolize. Let it I like that. Practice the pause. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh to answer you to But what so what was driving you then? Ego? Ego, competitiveness, ambition. ambition. It's always been a dream out there. Yeah. Uh, and I work very much off of like, if once I've dreamt something, if I if it's a, a figment of my imagination, that's one thing. But once I've actually seen it. No one's going to be a goal, not a dream. Now it's a goal, yeah. right? Just like when we moved here. Like moving to LA was, I don't even know if it was a dream, but making in Hollywood was. And then when my son got cast in Little Rascals and I saw a sound man holding a boom pole and they're like, we're going to turn around the world. And he's like, oh, cool. And he stuck his boom pole in his cart and then started playing on his phone. I was like, oh, this is just his job. I have to come here now because he's not even the star. He's just a guy who's at work. His work is just the most amazing thing in the world. Interesting. So now we must move here. So And you were moving from where? From Washington Tacoma, State. Washington. Oh, where wow. Where they worked for Boeing. Okay. So, we have never gotten over that the fact we have never, ever recovered from a plane is out there in two weeks. <laughs> You, he talked about that on a right. on the radio 11 show. Eleven days. Uh, Eleven. Right. I'm being generous. Days. I'm being generous with fourteen days. <laughs> Eleven business days. It's a machine. From an empty cigar tube to a flying machine. I don't like it. You talk about efficiency. So that's my ultimate goal. Uh huh. So when it comes down to something that might tear me away from my family, in a way of like, I don't miss my kids' birthdays. Their actual birthdays. Yeah. Now at this age, they don't really want us to come to their parties anymore. Mm, excuse which me. We're struggling with. Yeah. Mm. Can we go to Universal? Can we come? Stay, hang in the back. Yeah. yeah. My son literally told us, it's going to be weird if you guys are there. People won't be able to be themselves. <laughs> right? Mind you, we're cool parents. You are. Oh, Look at your shirt. Everybody thinks like they're cool parents. <laughs> <laughs> broski, broski. Broski, broski. <laughs> So, you do TikTok videos. Yeah, we do TikTok. And they hate when the friends find it. Yeah. Even though the friends think we're cool. Oh, well, that's But no nice. parent is cool yeah, to their children. Our kids are embarrassed by it. Yes. Okay. So that's my North Star. And I try to make sure nothing ever robs me of that. Right? So sometimes if it comes down to like something that might put a, a wedge between Melissa and I, I'll let the opportunity go. What's an example of something that would put a wedge between you and so Melissa? So like, I agree. We agree that once this tour is over, I'm off. No dates until uh, the okay. next one. I just, I'm happy this is on camera. Yeah. Right. So somebody who I wanted to work with hit me the week of the last days, like, hey, can you do this December 18th? And I'm like, I've, I'm off. Yeah. I, I can't. And then when I'm planning my other tour, Melissa tells me, and I'm talking about verbatim with fire in her eyes. This is true. When you go on this tour, it is done April 1st. It's done. And you're not taking another date until after our wedding vows is we'll re wedding vows. renewal. I was like, are over. <laughs> yeah, we're renewing our. Oh, this our is next year. next year. Next year. Okay, June. congrats. And I'm like, dang, is, is this June? Last week of June? Why April? She was like, because I got content. I want to do this. I want to do that. And I don't want to compete. So I'm mm. telling you now. And she's on the call with the agents. And they lined up the, the March 31st. Hey. So that's what it looks like now. But I can be honest. 
I know if we go into this, we can. Building a family business where one of us was already in it and one of us joined is, was, is a process. Describe. The, okay, so like. I'm, well, can Melissa start? Please. Just, okay. I was going to say, <laughs> I was just going to say like my impulsiveness and her take a breath. They clash. Yeah. So please, please, Lynn. Um, so if you're starting from the beginning, I, I was, I'm always the stable person in our, in our dynamic. So I'm mm-hmm. very much, we always use this kite and string analogy. Ooh. Kev is very much the kite. Okay. He's extreme, compliant. Yes. And I'm kind of like the anchor. I'm going to make sure you don't fly too close to the sun. My okay. mom has a thing she says to me when I'm like to, ah, pull the kite in, man. <laughs> pull the kite in. <laughs> so. And the, I'm the string. I'm going yeah. to pull it in. And so um, with that uh, dynamic, when I, well, let me back up. Let me just. Because did you have any aspirations? Nope. There we so go. So that's what I was going to say. Negative as he, as he was <laughs> dreaming all of this. At Boeing. In the beginning, none of this is making real money. But this is your dream. <laughs> so what does that mean? I need to stay stable. I yes. I need to make sure. Right. We I'm going to. Yep. I need to make sure we have insurance. I need to make sure, like, the bills are paid and the lights stay on. I need to make sure that. So, and that allows you to dream. Eventually, you start making money. Eventually, <laughs> all the fruits of the days you wasn't getting paid, they start to pay off. Can I put a pin yes. in this very quickly? Yes. When she was making those decisions to provide you the opportunity to dream. Mm-hmm. Did you harbor resentment or did you see it as going. get there? Me or her? Please. That's literally, that's where we was going next. Please take it away. Go ahead. Go. Are you asking me or her? Yeah, yeah. So we all going to go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all going to go. We, go go we in the boat. Yeah, because we in the vein. We in the vein. Um, <laughs> that as it started to take effect, you know, be more and more big, uh, more profitable, yeah. is what I'll say is that the string, the kite, the stability is starting to be looked at as you don't believe. Or an anchor. Or too much of an anchor. Too much of, because now I'm looking at, I'm sorry, what is the budget for this? Mm -hmm. Why would we do that? How about we don't? Why, you don't believe? No, no, no. It's just the stability. I want to make sure everything's Mm -hmm. taken care of. And so we had to find a way to navigate and negotiate a way where there's an appreciation for his dream and an appreciation for the, the, the pause that yeah. we have that it will allow us to look at the cons and not look at the, um, the, uh, well, what if this happens as you simply don't believe the doubt? Yes. It's not doubt's a better word. It's not that it's doubt. It's just that contingency. Can, can we just think of a contingency? <laughs> Ain't no contingency. <laughs> Because the contingency is what we would have never moved here on contingency. But a lot of dreamers think of contingency as then you don't believe. Ain't no plan B. I'm Deion Sanders. Have you seen this clip? (laughs) Deion Sanders? Willie Beeman. He said a reporter asked him about something, and Deion's basically keeping names of who didn't believe. And the guy's (laughs) like, in the audience, he's like, um, Dion, how do you feel? He's like, okay, Arya Stark. I, I remember what you said. Exactly. Yes, yes. I remember what you said. Uh, uh, do you believe now? And the guy's a reporter. He's like, look, man, I just. <laughs> I'm I surprising. Just, I just like, like, no, no, no. You don't believe. And like, I know that mentality because when I watched The Last Dance with Michael Jordan, I, I obviously not as good as Michael Jordan, but one thing we, <laughs> we both do, we are going to create enemies to defeat, to build ourselves up. Mm. And unchecked, mm. anyone can be that enemy. So say that more time. You're gonna create. I'm gonna create. In, Michael Jordan would hype himself up, bump into a coach, coach and say this. I'm a, I'm Did a you ever do that with Melissa? Yes. Oh, I was in. That's what I'm gonna tell you, Amanda. I didn't know we we're gonna. That's go why here. I'm single. I, <laughs> no, I'm not even joking. <laughs> That's why. I believe it, it. It's hard to navigate. I'll give you the moment I made Melissa an enemy, and she was an enemy for a few years. Shut the f- up, Barack. Do you, want, do you want me to tell you the truth, or do uh, you want me to, do you I want do. To lie? I'm I I mean, tell me more. <laughs> That's Shut so good. Up. <laughs> Why are you quiet? Why are you quiet? You're going to be too slow. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't mean I didn't love her. We were mean to each other. But I, I clocked. First tour. We are planning this tour, right? In hindsight, it all makes sense. At the moment, I'm not seeing clearly. We're planning this tour. I'm at work at All Def. She's at work at her aerospace company. She's also, and I'm, I had an hour and a half drive in traffic. Right? Okay. So 
uh, I'm calling her. We have a we have a, a conference call with her, me, her, and the tour manager, and okay. we're trying to set up dates, having a call, whatever. Mm-hmm. Melissa, being not only the string but the person who's picking up the slack at home, has picked up both of our children. She is doing on, uh, <laughs> she show is that. doing uh, homework. The boys are on the table, and she's cooking dinner, and she's on this conference call, right? So on the conference call, she's going on mute when when she's not talking. Because you hear sizzling, boys, boys, three times. You're like, she in the, in the middle of And it. the boys are boys. And yeah. the boys are boys. They're small. Yeah. yeah, they're baby, baby. Like, three times three is what? <laughs> Shut up, kid. We're going to the top. <laughs> now this is going to be important. Don't worry about it. I got you. Right. Right? <laughs> so she eventually is like, I, I, I think you, you couldn't do this call. Right? Something. For whatever reason, she's like, I really can't do it at this time. It wasn't. It was at this time. Bad. She was like, hey, this time is like really bad because the boys just got home. I got to cook dinner and help homework. Can we do this an hour later or on a different day? Something very reasonable. Yes. Right? Do I take it like that? No. What I say is, don't worry about that. I got you. I'm going to talk to the producer next How time. did you, f- what was the feeling that you had in that moment though? Do you remember? She, I, I do. She, this is not as important to her as it is to me. Mm. Right? Because now I know how Melissa is. I'll give you the now and then. Now I know when Melissa gets her back against the wall, she will choose family and the boys over her own stuff more than she will choose the work. I love my children. So we are the same. Yeah. (laughs) In my mind, I'm very much like, this is how I'm choosing my family. I'm going to build a legacy for them. Okay, okay. So that might yeah. mean I can't be there to help you for homework, but also... I'm building... I'm building something so that you might, ha- when might you're... have to go to college. <laughs> and if you do, I can actually pay for it instead of having to do financial aid, or I can give you a job later, but I got to go to work right now. Right. So that's how I'm thinking. Which is not not noble. Nobody Like, wrong. it's honorable. Yeah, nobody's like, nobody's wrong, wrong but... But we're not the... moving... This is all in hindsight. Synergy. We're not moving in synergy. What got you to synergy? Real uh, quick, therapy? Therapy. We'll get back to that. Time. Therapy and, and mostly therapy and time and vulnerability, I would say, those three. So she and so the next time, I'm like, you know what? I got you. Don't even worry about it. You don't have to be on this call. So then I get home the next day. She's like, how was the call? I was like, oh, we did it without you because I know you was just cooking dinner, right? And she didn't what say are your no. signs? Taurus and cancer. cancer. You're a cancer? Oh, yeah. Are you a cancer? <laughs> <laughs> Is there a crab over there? Crab. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> When's your birthday? July first. Oh, well, one, close. one, one. Yeah. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. So, and and th- and in that moment, I can honestly say, and kids honestly, are loyal. We are loyal yeah. to the bone. Yeah. I wasn't on some like I'm gonna show you at that moment. I was just like I'm actually gonna help you, right? But this is where it got worse. <laughs> okay. Melissa, for this tour, my um. My brother was supposed to tour manage. Mm -hmm. He got sick. He couldn't do it. We hired somebody else to do it. Melissa was supposed to quit her job Mm -hmm. to fully help, Mm -hmm. right? Okay. At the last second, and tell me if I'm wrong, Mm -hmm. last second, she gets cold feet. She decides, I'm not going to quit. The string was stringing. The string was stringing. The string was stringing. She decides, I'm not going to quit. Are you a Virgo anywhere in your chart? We don't go past the main thing. No, because that's where my string is. (laughs) My, I'm a Virgo rising that it's like, let's everybody, let's, yeah. let's calm down. Let's, let's settle. Let's, everybody relax. let's settle, settle, settle. Type yeah. A. So when she decided not to quit her job and work part time. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So that was the middle ground. Yeah, so that was the middle ground. Was that was a compromise. It wasn't but it to was me. For him. Oh. But it was for me. To me, that was. So you wanted. Let's so your version in. of belief was Bonnie and Clyde. We're robbing the bank together. We're either gonna get away with the money or we're going to jail. Amanda's face is <laughs> Are we getting because y'all money? have kids? With like kids. exactly. I, but my belief is how so, much of that is attached to just male? I think a lot of it. I, I I think the combination of maybe patriarchy, ego, uh, competition, and if I can be honest with myself not appreciating or valuing what was important to her enough mm-hmm. in the moment. Mm, that's good. I okay. think I wasn't, yeah, I'm like, oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, I get it, but do what I want to do. That's You're a dark a cloud. Like, why yeah. are you raining on my parade? Just jump with me, baby. Jump with me. So Not realizing that she was jumping with you. She yeah. was in her It's just way. that you were, she was turning. Yes. The turner got to be solid. Come on. A thousand percent. <laughs> you can't jump good if you're turning. You jump 
jumping though. Jump, yeah, turn, yeah, I see you. Yeah. Yes. So I wasn't valuing that enough. And over the years, I've learned that, you know, it's balanced. Sometimes it's more me, sometimes it's more her. Yeah, absolutely. But her, listening to her, at her, I say this to her on calls or after calls all the time. At our worst, if we agree with you, the worst case scenario is our money safe. <laughs> if we listen to me, our worst case scenario, our money not safe. <laughs> we out here. I, we out here, baby. I remember we moved to Calabasas, uh, a couple of neighborhoods um, way back. <laughs> in Calabasas. Not Drake and them, but like people like, y'all live to Drake, them di- different Calabasas. <laughs> so she didn't want to move to that house. And I'm like, if we get there, we, it was on a golf course. I'm like, even when we were only able to stay there for three months and we got to move back to a one bedroom, we're going to be able we to did stay. It. We was in there that one month, though. You feel? So, so logic, not your. I mean, I do logic, but I, my dream and ambition takes over because logic would not have had us move here. Because we both worked at Boeing, both the boys are in private school. They've got iPads. They got eight kids in their their. I don't think class. that's completely true. Well, the it, logic is that one of us is going to do this thing. You're mm-hmm. going to anchor us. Like, I mean, there's there's because part of this family business thing for you all specifically is that when there's an artist in the mix, mm-hmm. it's a different thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's <laughs> yeah. not like you're a car- it's not even a carpenters are artists. It's not like you're an yeah. accountant. Right. You know, and you're doing admin like right. the artist has to believe something from nothing. But right. logically, in our friend group in Washington, we were already doing well. Like, so I guess what I'm trying to say, though, is like it is illogical for an artist not to art. That's true. So that's what I mean by it actually was logical for y'all to move, because if you're an artist and you are not creating art, you will be a menace to society for sure. And that's kind of why I think it wouldn't have been her plan for us to move, but she was like, all right, he's, he's going to lose it. You, if he you, has to go to Boeing every day, he he's, he's going to lose it. And now, mind you, this is after I already got fired from one job <laughs> for arting and uh, for make, arting. For for arting <laughs> and using the color copier to make comedy show flyers and leaving the original in there. And my manager bringing me the original be like, what's this? I'm like, you ain't got to pay. What do you mean? Where'd you get that from? This is great. My flyers are reaching you in your, your neighborhood. In your circle? Don't worry about the tin. I got you. She's like, you left this in the copy. I was like, oh. You still want to go? <laughs> but now that we're here. I'll even buy you a drink. <laughs> Two drinks minimum. Don't even sweat it. I got my own list. So there I was, actually need 10 of you to come. <laughs> yes. There was definitely resentment in like, she's not believing me. So therefore, she's not quitting her job and stuff like that. And I think we probably unraveled that in therapy within the last three or four years, three, three years. Right. And I think it's resentment because, I mean, it was like deep in the back of my mind. It wasn't like forefront Mm -hmm. wise. Uh, But now I appreciate more what she brings to the table for the business. Uh, And I appreciate what I do, but I think I inflated what I brought to the table and and minimize what she brought to the table. If I can be fully honest, as you can, much as make you look bad. Please, it doesn't make you look bad. I think that was my like. It doesn't make you look yeah. bad. Part it of makes what you makes look you, you is honest. Like, you gotta go. You gotta build it. You gotta build. Like I, I say, it like this. What built Kev on stage? Yeah. Isn't the same skill that will build Kev on stage studios? Mm-hmm. Like Kev on stage, the person, the entity, I can go okay. hundred miles an hour by myself. Okay. But to build shows to pitch, whatever that next step is, that same skill set doesn't equally transfer over. I actually need more of Melissa's ability and yeah. and intuition and team. Uh, but mostly, the, I don't give them what I'm trying to give you. I got you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Melissa's intuition and her gut, she she does things that I don't do well, and it makes us a better team. Like, she can read people. Did you, did you, did you know, though... That like, so is it the therapy that allowed you to, to be able to identify like, oh, this is a valuable person beyond just being my person? Yes. I think it was personal therapy, couples therapy, mm. hearing from her and seeing her point of view and being open to being wrong. Mm-hmm. All of the, And also, if I can be completely honest, making colossal mistakes that she clearly said, if you don't do this that's this the, way. That's the biggest Sis. <laughs> so how, so how? Ah, you, you can't weigh it for me. No, that is. <laughs> it is. Because then I think it's, so I'll give an example. My son is learning how to drive. 
Okay. And That's exciting. He, yes. Yes, it is. And, so, and, fri- and frightening, you, yeah, right? frightening. Okay. So, you know, you read a manual on how to drive. Yes. You take a test and you can write and answer all the correct answers. Yes. It is not until you get into a car. Correct. And you're turning left and your light turns green and you go to turn and cars are coming your way that you remember, <laughs> I have to yield. Yep. 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 <laughs> yeah. That's how I totaled my first car. Exactly. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. Can you answer the answer correctly on the test? Yes. But experience. Situational. Mm-hmm. Yes. I won't do that again. Right. I don't remember. All right. right. <laughs> and I feel like that's the same therapy. I, I'm, we're huge advocates of therapy. I do think, I'm not saying therapy. But it's a two part. Yes, yeah. but it's two parts. Because now an experience backs up what you've learned in therapy. And can you apply it? And yes. And so that experience, you're like, so now I have something. It's not like, um, had you listened, or if you listen, this will happen. Yeah, but I don't really know that because I listened to myself and it all worked fine. Mm. But now you listen to yourself and it didn't. And I said the opposite. And, and now look where we are. Okay. So now I understand. <laughs> <laughs> the theory has now been proven. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's not just, thank you, theoretical. And I think that's why um, the experience coupled with therapy, I think it's, and it's especially the way Kevin operates in his mind, Theory is great, 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 great. How does how this look in the real world? What's going on in this real world? <laughs> so do you feel like um, it's sh- that you all got closer when you joined the business officially? Or did it or, or was that the hump that you had to get over? Yeah, I think so. I think it's it I think it's been a journey. It's been the hub. I would say now, like literally in this moment, we're probably working better than we probably ever have. That's my personal opinion. 1,000, because I'm so glad you said that. Okay, good. Uh, (laughs) There were times where we had full conversations where we were just like, we don't do this. No, I was probably... The working together? We, in order to maintain our marriage, we can't do this as much as we would like to. Because, in hindsight, because why? Well, at the time, it just seemed impossible that we could do it well. I think... At the time, it was probably, and you can correct me if, I'm, if you feel differently, I was very, I am like possessive, possessive micromanaging, straightforward. I think I'm the smartest. Pride? The best, proud, all of those so things. So a comic. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Got it. So I'm just like, no, I know what, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. Because... In my mind, you kind of got to go after it like you know what you're doing. Like, when I watch Kanye's documentary, one thing about him, I know, I know, I know, I know. But I just want to say this one thing. Okay. Prior to the... the I'm going to refute it, I'm but just gonna carry say, on. He really saw what he could be. He's delusional. Yes. Do you think that's bad? Um... Well, I think we've seen the results of that. Yeah, I think, but... It, because it, it gets out of control. For sure. I you think need a little bit. You need a little illusion. You need a little illusion. But that's the narcissism, right? Yes. I, you I, need I, a little bit of it because none of this is made for it. And everybody's also telling you you can't do what you yeah. know you can do. So I think I fall into this similar trap mm. of I got to believe it while I'm going to work at Boeing with my shirt tucked in. Mm-hmm. And I'm typing these planes into a schedule. And I know someday I'm going to sit on a movie set. And one day my name's gonna be in Times Square, but at the moment I gotta turn flight 317 in, or I'm gonna get fired. How do I make it through this day when all I can think about is that? Well, yeah, then you gotta create like a huge North Star to just a beacon, I like gotta just, to get you through yeah. until Gandalf arrives. Exactly. But at some point, you kind of also gotta be like, okay, now you gotta have a little realism because you can go too far with that. Yes. And I think that's what I, I would, you know. Just the too farness is what Melissa's good at making sure we don't go too the far. The anchor. Yeah. So I, but you got. And now, how does that apply anchor. in the in the business in the running of the business beyond just the Kev on stage of it all? Like I know that there's a number of partners, right, mm-hmm. in the business. How does that all work? Because when I hear about multiple partners all working somewhere, I'm like, woo child. <laughs> I think it's. I'm best. an only child, so that <laughs> that sounds crazy yeah. for me. The best way to understand it is the parent company, it's just me and Melissa. Okay. The projects have different partners. So TV shows in development, if that gets made, this project's going to have these partners. Okay. The app has these partners. 
The tour uses these partners. The studio. The studio uses these partners. But oh. the only people that are a part of all of those are Melissa and I. Okay. So some of these people work together. There's some of our employees who never go okay. to the app, never have a reason oh, wow. to be in the studio okay. at all. It's just their job doesn't require that of them and the app either. Yeah. Like, so it's an ecosystem. It's an ecosystem. We just like oversee a lot of, e- yeah, we just oversee a lot of ecosystems um, together. And I think it's been better as we've grown closer together. Uh, and also, to be honest, it was helpful to hear people in other relationships say that it's a struggle as well. I was going to ask. Yeah, we've had like uh, one of our friends. Uh, no name. Um, well, she said it live on a podcast okay. already. Uh, she said it on a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Erica Campbell and Warren Campbell, he's her producer. And she was saying like, your producer's got to get the best out of you. Yeah. So she's, he's, you know, producing her, uh, vocal producing her. And she's like, I'm mad at you, the husband though. Cause why are you talking to me that way? <laughs> and he's like, well, in this moment, I'm just your producer, but you also Yo. my husband. And I see you. the face looks the same. <laughs> so now when I'm pissed off at the producer, when the producer happens to live at my house, I'm also mad at the husband. Mm. So that was, it's the complexities <laughs> of it. all oh, the levels. <laughs> but it's helpful that it be somebody else, but you know, wanting to have it be a family business, has we've learned to navigate this. Believe it or not, there was a time in Melissa's life where she believed she was not creative at all. Please, Melissa, can you speak to this? Um, I don't know if you still be feeling that way. Um, I well, I was going to say that I feel like I've seen you come out of your yes. shell. Yes. yes. Like, I see you... Like um like I've been I've lit- I don't know what I was watching the other day. You were like no because da 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 and I was like okay Mrs. Kevin on stage she's staging now. I, <laughs> um, I definitely think I have come out of my shell. I think because I have such a um I think respect is the word I'm gonna look for, look uh, use use is for creative for the craft. Uh, yeah, I really do. I feel like what people are able to do with their creativity and the ability to make something out of literally nothing. I don't know that I still to, still to this day have that ability. And so I was looking at these people that I find to be really creative and I just like admire and I don't I'm not that and so okay. I couldn't put I couldn't imagine putting myself in like the same sphere mm-hmm. as them. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's where it came from. I do think that there are there's different levels of creativity. Yeah. And creativity can come about in different ways. Yes. And I think at the time I didn't have that uh, that revelation or appreciation. I think I do now. Um, but there is still a respect and just admiration that I have when I think of creative that I know I don't have. And and I don't mean that to like down myself or anything like that. I just mean like I just recognize what it is. I have an appreciation for it. And I recognize that ain't me. I can be creative over here. <laughs> I can do it in this way. But it don't look like that. And that's okay. That's fine. Exactly. Okay. But you wasn't saying all that. I know. She was I said, saying that's I'm not re- creative at all. That's my revelation today. Oh, okay. Understood. Understood. Yeah, today. Understood. That's my revelation Understood. today. Understood. I mean, it's a journey. She was creatively producing a podcast. <laughs> and she, so at the moment, it's like. How? And we were on tour doing it live as well. That was all her. Like she was. But I think there's something to be said for like, if you've always had to be the string, then being creative wasn't even really the muscle that was worked. I didn't imagine as a child. I barely Mm. watched cartoons as a child. And so it just. Are you the eldest? I am. And I'm not. I be knowing stuff. I be knowing. (laughs) (laughs) You be tapping. I saw the fly over there. <laughs> you been on. That was great. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and so I think I just never even considered myself. It's just not something that how I would self-identify. And well, so yeah. to have someone say it, it was foreign. Mm. It was very. It felt very like antithetical to who I am, how I see myself. If I'm the string, well, then that makes you the creative. Right. That makes you the dreamer. How now am I also, this don't make sense to me. I don't understand how these worlds are inter- interlocking. You know what else you just made me realize too? One of the other reasons we struggled is my natural personality, the, the things people who worked for me used to complain about are the things Melissa used to complain about, mm-hmm. right? So, Ooh. but what I realized is when people work for you, they will pick up for your flaws because they have to. Yeah. But your spouse doesn't have to. And they not, might not want to. So, for example, when I worked at All Deaf, I would I would 
do this wrong or do that wrong. And like people who work for me would be like, okay, that's too vague. You would do what? Wrong. Okay. So <laughs> I would micromanage okay. somebody or I would. And uh, your role at all deaf was I if was you were producing, of, I was the head of content and talent. Okay. So if it's a series that I want to make sure is right. So like dad jokes, dad jokes, for example, Okay. Right? early on, if I'm not trusting you, like, you do your notes and then just send me what you think is good and I'll decide if it's really good. Right. Okay. Um, for whatever that is. Right. And, or I would under budget stuff. Right. In my mind, when I make a budget, it's $50,000 coming in at 47, five every time. Right? Okay. Generally in production, things tend to go over, over budget. budget, but in my mind, do I learn from them going over budget every time? No. Next time I know where I messed up, I'm going to come under budget, right? So Did you not believe in the project? I, no, I believed in them all. I okay. just believed that things would go perfectly and right and on time, and therefore <laughs> we'd be on budget. <laughs> so person who's my head of production will be like, okay, so it's not. So I'm going to just turn the budget It's also in. all deaf digital. 1,000%. Like, yeah. so, it's Homeboy LLC. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so what they would do is they'd turn the budget in fluff so that it would work. Okay. Okay. But they wouldn't necessarily tell me, mm, they but they like, made the allowance. I'm going to make the allowance and not even piece. have to include you in it. Yes. But okay. And then, you know, what I end up believing look at us <laughs> coming in under budget, <laughs> not even knowing that people are picking up for my flaws. Wow. And also when people work for you, in my estimation, they respect you a certain way and treat you a certain way because they have to, mm -hmm. I would yes. unfortunately apply the same ideology to our home life. And when Melissa would ask me for advice, and usually comic asks me for advice on how to run their YouTube page, I tell them and they listen because they're like, they want to be where I'm at and mm -hmm. they're in the same field. Yes. Melissa asked me for advice. I give her the same thing. When she doesn't listen to the way I say it, I'm like, well, then you don't, it's not going to work. And one time she was like, I think you only know how to do things for comedy pages. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm more of a lifestyle brand. Let me follow these people. And I was like, but she was absolutely right. Cause I'm telling her, make a video every day, make three or four days. She's right. like, that doesn't nobody. Adrian Bailon's not doing that. Like, <laughs> but I'm not used to people telling me you're possibly wrong. Everybody's listening to me because in that field, you can follow my advice. And yes. Work. So I had to learn that you cannot talk to a person who is your wife. Like they are your employee even if you work together because she's not my employee. She's not my subsidiary subservient. She is at worst a partner. So what does it sound like to like, give me an example of sounding like you're talking to an employee and, and what that, cause this is my, this is your improv opportunity <laughs> and give me an example of the corrected language talking to your spouse. Let's say it's, um, Oh, do you have a scenario in go, mind? Go, 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 okay. Go no, go ahead. I think for me, it was the biggest thing is whatever I want to do, I can do without asking anybody. So say you're like, hey, Kev, uh, can can I can I use the studio on January 19th to shoot something? OK, sure. Amanda, you can. Right? right. Now it looks like, hey, Kev, can I use that? Let me let me talk with Melissa and get back to you. Whatever that is. Mm -hmm. Hey, Melissa, what do you got going on on the 19th? Uh, Amanda wants to use the studio. Do you have anything going on in there is is it available? What's your day looking like? Is there anything you have for us? Whatever that is. So consideration. Consideration was probably the biggest. And it seems small, but it it is it. It's teamwork. It's, it's definitely teamwork. So I think now it's perfect example. I like to be places 15 minutes earlier. Everywhere. You like to be places a week earlier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so on our way over, Melissa's like, I need to get some lash glue. Because my lashes are falling off. Flying, so in my head, I'm like, and I remember one time we were talking, she was like, I need you to consider me more. What's important to me, even at the point we're where. We're all having that <laughs> conversation. <laughs> yeah, consider me more. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, if we get this lash glue, we're not going to be 15 minutes early. <sighs> I want a man to think I'm professional. I like to show up. Okay, okay. But the lash glue is important. Okay, <laughs> let's stop. While we're stopping, you know, have you eaten? Let's get something to eat. You want Starbucks while you're in the CVS? Am I dying inside? <laughs> because we're now just going to get here at 2.59 instead of 2.45? Yeah, I am. But you know what? <laughs> I'm considering what's important to you. And I had to accept that if I'm late, we're late, that is better than her feeling like 
I didn't consider what's important to her. Yeah. Lashes aren't important to me. But you're also not late. I know, no, but if you're so there's late, th no, but you're not late. Yeah, but you're not late. But it, she's not making you late because that would be inconsiderate of Melissa. Correct. If the time to be there was one and she was like, I need lash loot. Can we go to Starbucks? Then I'd be looking at Melissa like, Melissa, why y'all? Why are you being lady? Yeah, we you be like were never going to be late. Yeah. You just had in your mind a standard that you had set and you've made everyone else have to hold to Bingo. that. And so that's what I did all the time. And. The, the not late is so good because in my mind, coming on time, I am late. Mm -hmm. Are you in drumline? Like no, what? I just, I, <laughs> my dad was always late for everything, so I oh. promised no one would ever wait. So on it's me. drama. Yeah, 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 drama. <laughs> it's drama. But that little consideration, it's like those things go a long way, mm -hmm. right? Because I could have been like, I'm sorry. Heck look, yes! Because yeah. now she's showing up happy. Yes. Right. And I value what's important. You, do you have some lash glue? Right. I know she don't want to do, <laughs> and I did. you know, it's funny. Uh, Jennifer Lewis had a clip about, she was saying like, oh, that's a pretty tree. And her, her man was like, don't nobody care about trees. She was like, we done. Because if you don't care about what's important to me or beautiful to me, then I don't know if we could be together. So I real. Think, yeah. I was like, you know what? It's also as a man, it's, I don't have to show up pretty or beautiful or anything. She like, in, uh, in in our visual society, she's like, this podcast is visual. I got to have the But she has to show up feeling good. 1, and and your, your role in any team is to make sure that everybody gets the best opportunity to feel good, especially if you're the leader. Yes. And I don't think enough leaders in the home or yeah. in the business really understand that, like, Protecting the emotional yeah. wellness is just as important as the economical, as the mental. I have a Reiki healer who told me, she was like, Amanda, you are the brand. Mm -hmm. In this life, you are the brand. Yep. Anyone in your immediate circle has to love the brand, has to believe in the brand, mm -hmm. and has to protect the brand. Yeah. She was like, it's not to say that there can't be people that help. Yeah. And they may not feel any of those things, yeah. but they can still be helpful. But they can't be, they can't be immediate yes. circle because those are the three tent poles that like have to be there. So when you're being considerate, you're doing all those things. Yes. And you all are the brand. We are, and we are also the couple. And sometimes the couple needs the nurturing more than the brand. That's good. Well, too. the couple has to be nurtured or else it ain't gonna be a brand. And, <laughs> like, and so like that gonna be no brand. It's no so brand. Funny, like that. The family business has, like, in, in some ways backfired. Like, I'll give you an example. We we had a show in Atlanta, and we were staying over a couple days to do some podcasts. And I wanted Melissa to come say, like, hey, hang out with me for a few days. Mm -hmm. We're going to be on some podcasts, whatever. And she has her own podcast with her sister that's that's growing. It's called Jenna Juice. It's, it's great. It's a, actually one of my favorite podcasts, yeah. even outside of, the like, them being my wife and sister-in-law. So she's like, you know um, – in my mind, I'm like, oh, we're going to go to Atlanta. We're going to you know, the Bar Vegan or whatever, Bar Barney's. We're going to have dinner and all this stuff. And she's like, oh, no, I'm not going to stay the whole time. I got to go back and shoot. And I'm like, what? But <laughs> I've got a big hotel room for us because we, we was going – you? I thought you were staying. <laughs> no. And I never asked her to stay. But in my mind, I was like, this is great. We'll be in Atlanta. we we'll love this hotel. We'll do all these things. And I never actually said this. Oh, wow. Yeah. I just assumed, because she said, I'm coming to Atlanta. I just assumed she was coming the whole time. So what ended ah. up happening is we ended up talking about this, talking about it in therapy and all that stuff. And she was like, now, you know, if you 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 want to shoot your podcast in person, like, why would you expect me to not to do the same thing? This is what you told me. And I'm like. <laughs> I'm just you're... listening to your yeah. advice. <laughs> <Finally>. <laughs> so I had to understand, like, this is her, her thing is just as important as mine and you go do your thing. And also on our podcast together, I used to like flake. If there's another opportunity or oh, get somebody feeling, I just won't do it. And she's like, Hey, if you don't pull up, it makes me feel like it's not important to you. Yeah. So I've got to start telling people, no, that's why I said the back to the Thanksgiving thing. I've missed out on opportunities that I would have normally taken. Mm. And because I want to make sure that this relationship mm -hmm. is is valued and nurtured even if that potential business relationship 
doesn't get valued or nurtured in that moment. Because if you're going to choose between one or two, I'm going to choose this one. And it's not always going to, it's not going to have to be that every time, yeah. right? Melissa, she's not like, oh, you got to choose me every time, never do anything. Like, she's not like that. But it's like, sometimes you got to, you know, I, I need to feel like I'm important to you and this is important to you. I mean, I guess even listening to y'all, like, it's fair to say that the family business, you know, it, the family part of the business has to function yes. for the business to be at its best. So you have to pour into the family yes. in the same way that you're pouring into the business. And I would I would even venture to say that it's more important yeah. yes. because it is what th brings it brings business. Yeah. <laughs> I right. Think, I think that's why, obviously, I'm about to make a thing that's not, they didn't think of it this way, but I'm going to make it so, that it's family business and family first. Yeah. And I think a lot of times in family business, we put business, business in front yes. of the family. It's the same, I was thinking about uh, show business, it was actually the analogy I was thinking when uh, Steve Harvey was on um, Earn Your Leisure, mm -hmm. and he was talking about a lot of times all we think about in, is the show. And we forget about the business part. Mm -hmm. when you're in show oh, business. yes, yes, right. yes. And I think in family business, sometimes we can focus too much on the business part. And you are um, sacrificing relationships in the process, which is uh, going back to the, the firing thing, which is why I had to step back from Kevin can't hire someone for my family. I can't hire someone from mm -hmm. Kevin's family and have to fire them. Because at the end of the day, that bloodline is to Kevin. That bloodline mm -hmm. is to me. So if my mama's mad tomorrow at me, She's still my mom. But you see now, I think that some people on the outside might think like, well, no, but they're married. So at the end of the day, like that's, that's, that's both y'all's family. Don't do no. it. You now, you know, good and well. Don't. Your I don't. Your mama. <laughs> your mama's your mama. Because if me and Melissa, God forbid, something happened, that, and she got to go back to her mom. She's not going to my mama's house. Right. She going to her mom. You know, my mom was every, I was going to say every ex I've ever had, I their mother has been like. My ex before the last ex, mama hit me the other day. Aww, just checking in. Just checking in. Really just check. Like, will you still date my son? No. Your son is, <laughs> is evil. Is any way? <laughs> she <laughs> literally said to me one time, I know my son ain't shit. I know. I know. But if you could. But can we be friends? I know that's right. She said, please don't forsake me for him. I know that's right. Low key, my mom and my daddy would do the same. <laughs> <laughs> my mom, my mom, dad, would call Melissa and speak to her for thirty minutes and never talk to me. That's always bugged out. Like when I found out that my mom and my ex had like <laughs> conversation, I was like, "What y'all? What y'all talking about?" You don't even oh, say, I mean, we can just I say hi to Kevin. No. no, man, watch out. <laughs> anyway, so what I was saying is, is it two scoops of lemon juice or what? <laughs> like my dad and her be chopping it up, you know. Yeah. So that's all great and stuff, but when, if you had to draw a line in the sand, it's still that's her baby though. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. It's all love. Her dad is my biggest fan. However, more than my actual father, and I love them both. <laughs> but her dad kept every flyer we ever had ever in his garage, like we were the four times. <laughs> and still, that's his daughter. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, we're 40 years old. We are. We still learn. Because this is not. It's just easy. starting. We're what? Just starting. This 40 thing? Wait till. Ugh. Yeah. It's. Uh, listen. And in this business, like, we don't have 40 years of experience in this. We just have 40 years of life. Yep. We only have, like, seven to 10 years of even this, this business. Yeah, this and, dynamic. Like, three to five running a business together. Ooh. So in that way, we are very. Novice. Young. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, and the thing that's crazy is the family business puts strain on the marriage. So our marriage is strong in this way, but the family business starts putting strain where prior to the pandemic, when we both worked separate jobs, there's some stuff that you just didn't have to worry about. Mm -hmm. She had her own world. I had my own world. We come together, talk about our day. Now our day is the same day. Now we're stuck in the house. Now I didn't realize how much time we spent together away until we can. Now ooh, you're home a lot. <laughs> Not that I like want you to tour, <laughs> but when you were gone, I have my own stuff going. Yeah. You home again? How many? How much is it? Go to the zoo. Zoo your ass out of here. Everything goes. <laughs> you ain't got a show in Little Rock House. Where Tony at? Where you got with Tony? <laughs> <laughs> didn't realize her sister comes over on tour. They got girls night. They drinking wine. They watching shows. It's like the tour's over. Okay. You uh, you in the kitchen? What y'all what y'all watching? Um, I was home Saturday with oh. all day. 
I'm home. The boys are like, whoo. Okay, man. <laughs> you about to head you on know, out. Nah, not I'm, that. You just home again. You, you're in the refrigerator again? I'm talking, listen. I'm like, listen, I'm home. She's like, okay. I love you. <laughs> she was just announcing it all day. All day. I'm petting the dog. But you know what? That's funny because... <laughs> Listen, you was like, you need to be Man. here. But it's, but I didn't plan for you to be here right now. We said Thanksgiving. Yes, correct. We had said November. We said November 18th. <laughs> so this is off the ah, schedule. Go oh train the dog. God. Take the dog outside. Take the dog for a walk. <laughs> I'm so excited. Take a nap. I'm going to take a nap, y'all, okay. if anybody needs me. Because I'm home. going to be taking a nap right here. Well, we're about to go home to the Amandaverse and answer some Patreon-only questions for the lovely Mrs. and Mr. Kev on stage. Head on over to theamandaverse.com. The questions are going to be things like, do you check in with your boys to see how this lifestyle affects their mental health? Questions like, how do you handle criticism when working with family? Questions like, Kev, we are both Tauruses, and when it comes to family, we are super protective. How do you keep level-headed now that list has a bright spotlight as well. So those are the types of questions that we're going to get into. I'll see you over there at theamandaverse.com. All of those things, don't you depend on no man. You need to get yourself together. You need to be working. You need it like he was that type of person. Get my daughter this college plan yes. so she don't need no man. Period. <laughs> I'm sure they'll be going to therapy on us for something. I was going to say, I mean... <laughs> It's just what it is. It's just what it is. But you we know? did take y'all to Egypt. So when y'all go there, make sure you tell her that, too. <laughs> y'all got to be on that yacht. Y'all wouldn't say nothing then. <laughs> and this project, so if Kukan comes out next year or in 2028, it'll be together. I'm also planning a vow renewal, so Kukan is not top of list, not the line for me. <laughs> it's all of my money. Right. <laughs> I realize that I can be funny, and I've... I haven't been able to really tap into that because I was trying to be the aesthetic, you know, Instagram. And I think now it's just like, I think this is funny. I'm going to post it. I was afraid of you. Why do you say that? Well, I really, I got to tell y'all, I think that people are going to really appreciate the transparency here because, you know, the reality is that we live in a world of highlight reels Yes. and everything just looks copacetic and yeah. perfect and what what ends up happening is unintentionally folks say well mom, i must be not doing it right or yeah. maybe i'm lacking why can't i have that etc and the reality is that all of this requires effort it requires selflessness yeah. you know to be in a family business setting with the people you love you're gonna have to be humble but you also sometimes gonna have to buck up yeah. <laughs> yeah. you're gonna have to know when to lead and when to lieutenant very good at this. Yes. I wanted to say, you are outstanding yeah, at this. Yeah, yeah, I agree. You are in, I don't know what your dreams are for yourself. <laughs> this is a bad. But this is real. You are outstanding at this. Yeah, yeah, this is a bad. Great questions, great insight. <laughs> funny when you need to be, but not so funny. Like, okay, you ain't got to put a joke in and everywhere. You, and you rephrase well. Yeah, you're you good. rephrase well. You're, you're going to do well. Yeah, this is fantastic. I don't, I don't know, know if you've met Amanda Seals, but... <laughs> Phenomenal. As a consumer, I'll be like, I would, I would enjoy this episode. Outside of me being on, I'm like, this is a solid episode. Thank you. I am really um, working on like re continuously cultivating my own like self validation, but a little outside validation never oh, hurt nobody. <laughs> <laughs> a girl did just get broken up. Okay. We don't need it. We don't need it. It's, 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 it's a cherry on top. I am the Sunday. I'm a full yeah. Sunday. Yes, I love this. But we love a cherry on top. Yes, we love some sprinkles. And do. Okay. <laughs> and do. Um, no, I really appreciate this. I really think that um, what you guys are doing is continuing a legacy of black business, of, you know, continuing to grow the network, particularly within Hollywood. We need as many folks like y'all as possible. Like when you talk about how, you know, you, you're giving your sons the opportunity to, if they want to go to college, they can go. If they want to do this business, they can do it. Yeah. Like, I don't think enough of us, we talk about like generational wealth and not enough times do we understand that generational wealth is not just money. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that is so good. That is so that's true. Very good. Thanks, guys. That is really good, man. Because this, our youngest son is a family. It's so funny. He's like a like a porcupine. 
of like you think he's all prickly. Uh huh. But he's like, are we gonna watch a movie together? <laughs> what you like, do? So he's a hedgehog. He's yeah. a hedgehog. Yeah. And like we make sure to nurture that part and build those memories and spend that time and go watch Spider Man. Yes. And they put a trailer in the group chat. Oh snap! Oh, that's coming out. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yep. Melissa's not the biggest Star Wars fan, but when Mando's on, she come down and watch it. She'd be appreciate, like, oh, I appreciate that's Tatooine. you. I'll fall asleep that's Tatooine. That's the two moons of yeah. Tatooine. I, well, it's so funny. This we is the way. The, 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 some movie. Melissa can't she can't fall asleep many nights. Avengers? No, no. We was watching. It was Black Dynamite. Okay. She fell asleep. I did. If it's family movie night, it was my idea. she can sleep Mm, quickly soundly oh. i mean we put on that star wars movie. she said this is <laughs> great no because the presence she's yeah. still here though and, and you know what it's it says that you all love yourselves yeah and it says that you all love your family and like hearing you talk about like the efforts of like okay we're having a bumpy ride like how do we reach outside of ourselves? Like not just therapy, but like looking at other couples, looking at yeah. other businesses, like how do we always like pour into ourselves? And then you said something very, you said it in passing, but you said personal therapy and couples therapy. Yeah. Like we're, this episode was about family business, but look how much time was dedicated to just the interactions. Yeah. Yeah. Because that is what essentially business is personal. I don't know how many times I got to say this to people. Business is personal. I don't know who said it's not personal. It's not big. It's Colonialism. Personal. That's who said it. Colonialism. Oh, yeah. These <laughs> said that because they want you to be able to just take the L yeah, it's and not feel personal. no type of way. It it's personal. personal. How is my livelihood not yeah personal no. and it's not to say and when i say personal i don't mean like it's like i'm trying to take a dig at you but what i'm saying is that there's a humanity that exists in us yeah. doing business together That's and so in family there has to be an acknowledgement of that and it was beautiful to hear you all talk about that and share that with us y'all know what to do so where can go where can they go to get the app where can they get all the on stage how can they become a part of the crew um you can find me on all social media platforms at miss kev on stage Kev on stage for me. The app is available. Kev on stage. Wait, no, it's Mrs. Kev on stage. You're correct. It's yeah. MRS. It's MRS. It's the it's the married version and pronunciation. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember learning in seventh grade. Like I literally remember the day that he was like, Mrs. means you're married and it's MRS. Ms. means you've made a choice. <laughs> 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 Uh, I, I never forgot that as long as I live. Like Now I still remember. <laughs> I'm Kevin on stage on everything. Uh, the book is called Marriage Be Hard. The reason we talk like this openly, honestly, is because a lot of times people put relationship goals on us. Oof. And we Hashtag. tear those down. Hello. If you want to follow us, follow us as we try to figure out. We're not on the, the journey. successful relationship mountaintop that we can tell you. Look how we go. We is climbing up. If you're there, you one of you is cheating. 1,000%. <laughs> <laughs> if you want that mountaintop pointing down, one of you is cheating, oh, or are, or, or one of you is gay. We are, <laughs> or or both. <laughs> we are climbing the mountain. And all we're saying is, put your hand right there. Because last time I seen somebody <laughs> die because they reached for that one. That's all we're doing. We are no better. We are on the same climb as you. We helping you, and if you can help us, please. Right. Help us. So, uh, yeah, marriage be hard is the book available everywhere, uh, and that's all. And it's yeah. last I checked, it was a. New, New York, York Times, Times bestseller. <laughs> down in New York told me. Somebody said it was a bestseller. So you know, you know. Weekend. big business. Number nine. Big business. <laughs>